Welcome back, Year 6, to Lesson 5 of our Destination Reader Sessions, where we are reading Ken's Case Kingdom by Michael Morpurgo. Yesterday, we finished reading Chapter 1, and Michael and his family set sail on their great adventure around the world. Today, we'll read Chapter 2. Let's get started. As always, key words throughout today's lesson will be found in red. These could be vocabulary words or sentence starters from your strategy prompt sheet. Questions for you to answer will be found in blue, and time for you to do some writing and answering of these questions in blue will be found in green. Let's get started. As with each and every of our Destination Reader sessions, you will need a copy of the story, Ken's Case Kingdom, your Destination Reader strategy prompt sheet, a pencil, and a piece of paper or your home learning book. If you don't have any of these things, Year 6, pause the video here and come back when you have everything that you need. All right, let's get going. Today, as I said, we'll be reading Chapter 2 of Ken's Gay's Kingdom. Today will be our last day looking at our reading strategy of asking questions. So one last time, Year 6, I'm going to ask you, why do good readers ask questions? Pause the video here and write down your answer. Well done. I know we're all experts with this reading strategy by now, so let's take a look at the answer. Good readers ask questions as they read because it helps them to understand what is happening in the story. Asking questions also helps the reader stay interested and wanting to read more and know more about the story. Let's also remember that when we ask questions in Destination Reader, it's a little strange because we don't necessarily give the answers. In our session today, we are just practicing asking the questions. Now, if you ask a question and you need the answer to help you understand the story, by all means, pause the video and go back and find the answer to your question. We want to make sure you're understanding and you're following along with what's going on. As always, today in our lesson, we are going to be trying to use as many different question stems as possible in our work. Before we begin, we must bust out those vocabulary words. So let's take a look at five different words today. Four of our five words today are nouns. And I haven't asked you this in a while, year six, but what is a noun? Great job. I know many of you said a PPT. Great work. A noun is a person, place, or a thing. Let's take a look at our vocabulary. Our first word is skipper. Skipper. Great work. The skipper is the captain of a boat or a ship. Let's pause a moment and think, who is the skipper on the Peggy Sue? Well done if you said mum. Mum is the skipper. Let's next look at the word luxury. Luxury. Great job. A luxury is a state of great comfort or elegance. Our next word is an adjective. It's a describing word. The word is idle. Idle. Great work. To be idle means to be avoiding work or being lazy. <gasps> I wonder who's being idle in our chapter of reading today. Our fourth word today is talisman. Talisman. Great job. A talisman is an object thought to have magic powers or to bring good luck. So we'll learn about an object today that Michael thinks of as a talisman. And our final word today is conspiracy. Conspiracy. Well done. A conspiracy is a secret plan to do something. Now, when we talk about a conspiracy in the world, we're talking usually about something unlawful. 
But in our story today, Michael's talking about a conspiracy that he thinks his parents have created against him. <gasps> I wonder what it will be. Let's get reading. Before we do, let's take a look at this image of a sailboat. The Peggy Sue is a sailing yacht. And we're going to hear a lot about the bow and the stern of the Peggy Sue. I thought it was important to explain that the bow of a boat is the front of the boat and the stern is the back. You can also see in this image the words port and starboard. The port side of a boat is the left hand side and the starboard side is the right hand side. So if something's happening off the port side, it's happening off the left side of the boat. All right, let's begin reading chapter two. Water, water everywhere. We're on page 17. I'll give you a moment to find the page and have your finger ready to follow along while I read. Let's go. Water, water everywhere. They say that water covers two thirds of the Earth's surface. It certainly looks like that when you're out there and it feels like it too. Sea water, rain water, all of it is wet. I spent most of the time soaked to the skin. I wore all the right gear. The skipper always made sure of that, but somehow the wet still got through. Down below too, everything was damp, even the sleeping bags. Only when the sun shone and the sea stopped its heaving could we begin to dry out. We would haul everything out on deck and soon the Peggy Sue would be dressed over all, one great washing line from bow to stern. To be dry again was a real luxury. We always knew it could not last for long. All right, let's pause there. I'm wondering why is everything always wet or damp? And how does the family dry out their things when the sun comes out? What questions do you have so far in chapter two? Pause the video here and write down two of your questions. Great job. Let's keep reading. We are halfway down page 18. You may think that there's not a lot for three people to do on board, day after day, week after week. You'd be quite wrong. In daylight, there was never a dull moment. I was always kept busy, taking in sail, winching in, letting out, taking my turn at the wheel, which I loved, or helping my father with the endless mending and fixing. He often needed another pair of hands to hold and steady as he drilled or hammered or screwed or sawed. I'd forever be mopping up, brewing up, washing up, drying up. I'd be lying if I said I loved it all. I didn't. But there was never a dull moment. Only one of the crew was allowed to be idle, Stella Artois. And she was always idle, with nothing much to bark at out, out on the open ocean. She spent the rougher days curled up on my bed down in the cabin. When it was fine and calm, though, she'd usually be found on watch up at the bow, alert for something, anything that wasn't just sea. You could be sure if there was anything out there, she'd spot it soon enough. An escort of porpoises, perhaps, diving in and out of the waves. A family of dolphins swimming alongside, so close you could reach out and touch them. Whales, sharks, even turtles. We saw them all. My mother would be taking photographs, video and still, while my father and I fought over the binoculars. But Stella Artois was in her element, a proper sheepdog again, barking her commands at the creatures of the sea, herding them up from the deep. Let's stop there. Now we're learning a bit more about what life was like out at sea. So I have a few questions. How does Michael feel about the jobs he has to do on the Peggy Sue? And why was Stella the only one allowed to be idle? Pause the video here and write down two of your own questions so far in chapter two. Remembering, please use different question words if possible. Great work. Let's keep reading. We are now on the last paragraph of page 19. Annoying though she could be, she'd bring her smelly wetness with her everywhere. We never once regretted bringing her along with us. She was our greatest comfort. 
when the sea tossed and churned us and my mother felt like death from seasickness. She'd sit down below, white to the gills, with Stella on her lap, cuddling and being cuddled. And when I was terrified by the mountainous seas and the screaming wind, I would curl up with Stella on my bunk, bury my head in her neck and hold her tight. At times like that, and I don't suppose they were that frequent, it's just that I remember them so vividly. I always kept Eddie's football close beside me as well. The football had become a sort of talisman for me. Ooh, that's that vocabulary word year six. Remember, it's like a lucky charm. A sort of talisman for me. A lucky charm. And it really seemed to work, too. After all, every storm did blow itself out in the end. And afterwards, we were always still there, still alive, and still afloat. Let's pause there. I'm wondering why Michael believed that his football was a talisman. I also wonder if the family was getting used to the vicious storms they were facing at sea. What questions do you have about Michael and his family's experience out at sea? Pause the video here and write down two of your own questions. Well done. Let's keep reading. We are now just over halfway down page 20, the second last paragraph that begins, I had hoped. I had hoped my mother and father might forget about all the planned schoolwork. And to begin with, it seemed as if they had. But once we'd weathered a few storms, once we had settled and well into our voyage, they sat me down and told me the unwelcome news. Like it or not, I was going to have to keep up with my schoolwork. My mother was adamant about it. I could see that any appeals to my father would be pointless. He just shrugged and said, Mum's the skipper. And that was the end of that matter. At least at home she had been my mother, and I could argue with her. But not of the Peggy Sue. Not any more. It was a conspiracy. Between them they had devised an entire program of work. There were maths course books to get through. My father would help me with that if I got stuck, he said. For geography and history, I was to find out and record all I could about every country we visited as we went round the world. For environmental studies and art, I was to note down and draw all the birds we saw, all the creatures and plants we came across. My mother made a particular point of teaching me navigation, too. Barnacle Bill taught me, she said. I'm teaching you. I know it's not on the curriculum. But so what? It could come in handy, you never know. She taught me how to use the sextant, take compass bearings, plot a course on the chart. I had to fill in the longitude and latitude in the ship's log. Every morning, every evening, without fail. Let's pause there. Now we're learning a bit about everyday life. Michael and his family have been at sea now for a little while. And now they're making him do his schoolwork. Oh, no. So, I wonder, how do I know that schoolwork is important to Mum and Dad? I also wonder why Mum decided to teach Michael about navigation. What do you wonder, Year 6? Pause the video here and write two more questions you have about this chapter so far. Well done. Let's keep reading. We are now at the top of page 22. I don't think I had ever really noticed the stars before. Now, whenever I was on watch in the cockpit at night with the Peggy Sue on her wind vane self-steering, the others asleep below, the stars would be my only company. Gazing up at them, I felt sometimes that we were the last people alive on the whole planet. There was just us and the dark sea about us, and the millions of stars above. It was on watch at night that I would often do my English. This was my own version of the ship's log. I didn't have to show it to them, but I was encouraged to write in it every few weeks. It would be, they said, my own personal, private record of our voyage. At school, I had never been much good at writing. I could never think of what to write or how to begin. But on the Peggy Sue, I found I could open up my log and just write. There was always so much I wanted to say. 
And that's the thing. I found I didn't really write it down at all. Rather, I said it. I spoke it from my head, down my arm, through my fingers and my pencil, and onto the page. And that's how it reads to me now, all these years later, like me talking. I'm looking at my log now. The paper is a bit crinkled and the pages are yellowed with age. My scribbly writing is a little faded, but it's mostly quite legible. What follows are just a few chosen extracts from this log. The entries are quite short, but they tell the tale. This is how I recorded our great journey. This is how it was for an 11-year-old boy as we rode the wide oceans of the world on board the Peggy Sue. And that's the end of Chapter 2, Year 6. So let's take a moment and pause here and ask any questions we have about Chapter 2. Chapter 2 has been all about Michael and his family beginning their journey and getting used to life on the Peggy Sue. I wonder why Michael was able to write so easily and freely into his log, like he wasn't able to do when he was in school. I also wonder why it was important that Michael kept the ship's log. Do you have any questions about the ship's log? Pause the video here and write down two questions you have. Great job. And that's all we're reading today. Next week, we will continue reading Kensuke's Kingdom and begin making inferences. What I'd like you to do today is write the three biggest questions you have so far about the story. Maybe you wonder what's going to happen. Maybe you wonder how Michael and his family feel at the end of their journey. Your questions are absolutely up to you. You can also predict the answers to your questions and then check back as we read to see if any of your predictions were correct. Great job today, Year 6, and I will see you again on Monday for our next Destination Reader Session.